guys, it's May May, and in our Freestyle Friday this week, we are talking again about craft fairs. And the first two things we're gonna talk about are time and money. The first thing you have to think of is, when is the fair? When I say when is it, I mean, is it early in the spring? Is it a wintertime situation? And the reason you have to think about this is, what is your schedule like in those times of year? Do you have kids that are in school? Do you have a job that requires you to be there, you know, a lot during the holidays or what have you? Because it'd be hard for you to plan a holiday craft fair if, say, you work retail and you know your hours are longer during that time of year. So you got to think about when in the year is the craft fair. And now, how long till the craft fair? Let's say that it is, well, let's look at it now. It's August, and I just recently re received an email from someone asking me to participate in their craft fair in October. Well, if I started today, I have literally two months to the day to get prepared for that October 15th craft fair. And it's a three-day craft fair, so that would be a lot of stuff to prepare. Do I have the time for that? What you have to look at is, how much product do I already have put together? How much more do I need to put together and how long will it take me to do that? Now, if you're somebody like me, I work full time in the daytime. So the only time I have to work on my craft fair is at night. So I have to consider what nights can I do it? Well, on Wednesday night, I'm at church. On Saturday night, we typically do something with the family. So I've got Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday and Sunday if I want to squeeze that in. Well, you have to kind of break that down and go, okay, so if I'm going to work five nights a week on the craft fair, I've got to do so many projects each night between now and the craft fair. So you have to break that out and you have to look at how long each item takes to make. For example, we're gonna use earrings for example, cause I make earrings. And one pair of earrings I can put together in about three minutes. I mean, by the time you put everything together. So it's three minutes for a pair of earrings. And let's say I wanna take for a three day craft fair, gosh, I might want a hundred pairs of earrings because this is a long craft fair. Let's just say that. Well, by the time you make a hundred pairs of earrings, you multiply that by three minutes, you're at 300 minutes. Does this kind of let you see what you're looking at? Because you think, oh, I can make a pair of earrings so easy. But you got to think about you're not making one pair of earrings. You're making enough to last you for three full days. Now, let's just say you sell other items and you don't need a hundred pairs of earrings because you've got other items on the table. Well, if you run out of earrings and you just say, well, I'm out of those, no big deal, you take what you've got. But you still have to break it down and go, wow, this is what I'm looking like. So you literally have to look at each thing you make, discover how many you want to take with you, how long it takes you to make them, and how much time you need to set aside to do it. This word is not allowed once you signed up for a craft fair. Unfortunately, you cannot procrastinate. You have to go ahead and get this stuff done because you don't want to spend the last week cramming things in for your craft fair. That makes it so miserable and you want to be able to enjoy it. So let's say that you sit down with your calendar and you schedule out that each day, this is what I have to make to be on time. And if I were you, I'd squeeze in one or two things each day to kind of let you be ahead of time so that the last week, all you're thinking about is what my table is going to look like, how I'm going to do it, and those sort of things. Instead of, oh my gosh, I've got to make 30 projects before in the morning. And then you've, you've lost the fun. So you cannot procrastinate. If you make yourself a schedule, you need to stick to it as close as possible. And let's say you miss a night. You need to come back and you need to you know, try to fill that into another night because people are gonna get sick. You're gonna have kids that you have to deal with. You're gonna have you know, family obligations, work obligation, things are gonna happen. So you'll have to be able to give yourself some room, but you cannot procrastinate. If there's one thing I know, every project has to be planned. You have to start with paper and pen or iPad and stylus, but you have to plan. You have to be prepared for anything that can happen. So part of your planning, and it all depends on your craft, because it's hard for me to say, like if you're a if you're a paper crafter, this is something that's really hard to take with you and do in the car. So you're not really gonna paper craft on the way to places or on the way to trips. So this is something you're gonna have to set aside time to do. So you need to plan exactly where you need to be and when you need to be there to get your stuff done. Now, if you're a crocheter, is that how you say that? Crocheter, if you are a person who crochets, let's say it like that. That's something you can do in the car. So I mean, you can take a lot of advantage of somebody driving and you going on a trip, but you have to plan that that's what you're going to do on those trips. 
and plan that for your craft fair. The other planning that matters is planning every single thing that you want to take with you. This cannot be, oh yeah, I'll do a craft fair and just throw some stuff together. You must plan. Let's talk money. I don't like to talk about money because this is always Vince's job. I always talk, I let Vince handle money. That's what I do. But in something like this, he really can't do that for me because he might say in those same pairs of earrings we keep talking about, okay, Amy, how much does it take you to make one pair of earrings? And then I have to break it down. And I want you to think about this. In a pair of earrings, think of all the little tiny pieces that you purchase in multi-packs. So you have to think, how much does one earring hook cost me? You know, you have to break that stuff down and see where you're going to be. So I can't tell you how many times he said to me, so how much does it cost you to make something like that? And I'm like, I have no idea because... I just go into my stash and put it together. So it's stuff you've made, you know, in the past, or you've purchased in the past and you turn it into a craft to sell. Well, in order to be able to be successful and in order to be able to make money, you have to know what you're spending. It's difficult for us crafters because because I may sit down with something and have the plan to use these five items on it and then go, oh, you know what would be cute if I add this from my stash or that from my stash. Y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all do it. But... Then you got to add that into the price. How much is your booth at the craft fair? You know, if, if you have to pay $150 for the craft fair booth, you have to consider if you're only selling earrings and you sell them for, I don't know, $5 a pair, how many pair will you have to sell before you make your money back, which is easy math, and then how much will you have to sell to justify your time? Sometimes craft fairs are not the thing to do depending on your project. I'm just going to be honest about that. Some people may not tell you that, but sometimes... Projects are better sold at Etsy or um, some online store. Maybe sometimes it's better to spend your money to get a domain name and do your own web page than it is to go to craft fairs every week, depending on your product. Um, for example, you certainly wouldn't sell an ebook at a craft fair, right? You would sell that online. So maybe there's some products you have that you just shouldn't consider taking with you. Or maybe your product is perfect for the craft fair and that's where you need to be. So then you need to think, the craft fair cost is important, but it's the only place I can sell my, my product, so I need to try to overcome that. Now, don't price yourself out by the cost of the craft fair. For example, in the area that I live, everybody knows I live in Alabama. Well, in Birmingham every year, there's a huge craft fair. Um, they do it actually at Christmas and at Easter. Well, they have a lot of requirements to get into that craft fair, and it's very expensive. It's a four-day craft fair, but I'll tell you this. If you can get in and your product is marketable, you will definitely make money at this fair. It is packed with people for four straight days. However, it would take me a year to get ready for that fair. So someone like me, I would look at something that's a one or two day craft fair and maybe it's more local to me and maybe it's just a little more low key so I don't have to overdo it because I don't spend all my time on the craft fair. So you got to think about those things. How much is this craft fair and is it worth it for me to be in the craft fair considering what my product is and how many I can make in time? Now, we're going to talk about saturation, which you think wouldn't come under the money market, but it does. If you, if you think about how much money it's going to cost you to make something, you also have to consider how unique is that product. Because if you're making, what's a common thing at a craft fair? Let's say hair bows. So many people make hair bows at craft fairs, and they're really cute. But unless yours is really, really unique, you're going to have a really hard time selling it unless you drop your price so low that there's no reason they would buy from anybody else. But by the time you drop your price so low, you've kind of priced yourself out of the market, spent months getting ready for it, and for what? To give away product. So think about that. Think about the market and make sure it's not saturated with what you offer. And I don't mean the entire market would be saturated with what you offer. There's probably other craft fairs that wouldn't be saturated. So that's probably where you want to lean to. So think about that when you're making your products to sell. All right, business or hobby. This is also under the money the money topic. Is, what, is the craft you make a business or a hobby? A business means you're willing to invest money and time into it. And money in advertising, marketing, and that sounds so vague and so so broad but the truth is this advertising you're gonna have to have a banner or something for your site to show your name for your for your um, craft fair booth you're gonna have to have business cards or flyers you're gonna probably need a website in today's business a website is just the way to go because everybody looks online for everything I remember one year I went to my big craft fair in Birmingham and I bought these shirts that were so cute 
And when I was there, she only had like three or four. And I'm not a little girl. I'm a big girl. So it's hard to find those kind of things in my size. And she carried them. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to remember the name of this person because I'm going to buy these shirts um, online because she told me she had more online. Well, I did not get a business card. Although she had them, I forgot to get one. And I remember coming home and searching and searching to find her online. And I did eventually find her online. But if she didn't have that website, how would I find her later? So you got to make sure that you're not only purchasing your marketing items, but you're handing them out as well. And that is part of your expense, guys. I'm telling you because business cards can be expensive. Banners can be expensive. You just have to think this stuff all the way through. Now, business or hobby. Maybe what you do is just a hobby and you just want to do it for yourself. Maybe um, show it to people. If you want to make money off of it, find a different way to do it from based on your hobby. Say you... Um, you what can you do let's say you're you sew i think sewing is a is a dying art form i think so many people um have gone away from sewing when it is it, it's probably the most artistic um thing i can think of i always think about my grandmother and her sewing abilities but let's say that you sew well maybe you want to teach people your craft so instead of selling the products that you make which take if you're a, if you sew if you're a seamstress or you sew at all you know one product takes a long time to make but maybe you want to teach somebody how to do that and so you have a class that you charge for or you have a video tutorial that you charge for. Maybe that's a better way to go than actually doing a craft fair. Just things to think about. Okay, and this is one I think is not fun, but keeping track. You have to keep up with everything that you're, that you're spending. And I know at my last craft fair that I did, I remember I would be at Walmart and think, oh, I need some clothespins, so I'd pick up some clothespins. But I'd pick them up when I was picking up everything else for the house, like, you know, paper towels and cleaning supplies and groceries. Well, then when I got home, I might not save that receipt. Well, if you want to if you want to be able to keep track of your expenses and be able to do whatever, you know, accounting and tax preparation you need for that, you got to keep track. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. If you're going to buy something at the store and it's for your craft fair, you need to put it aside and pay for it separate and get that separate receipt. I promise you'll be glad you did in the long run. And then you got to find a way to keep track of those receipts. Um one way I really like to do it, there's a couple ways, but I think this is really neat. You can take a photo of it with your phone and then email that to yourself and then do a file on your computer with all of your um, receipts in it. So you still keep the paper version in like a file or something, but you have a digital version as well. So that's a good way to do that. And also remember, if you set yourself a budget, which I've never craft fared with a budget. I think that'd be genius if you could, but I've never done it. But let's say you have a thousand dollar budget well, you got to keep track to know where you are so you can stay in line with your budget. Having fun. Okay. The fun to me is not the preparation. The fun to me is the day of the event. You get it all set up. Everything's where it should be. And now all you have to do is sell and tell people about your product. You can have fun doing craft fairs. It's a lot of work in the beginning. And a lot of you have told me in the comments from my last video that the stuff I was saying was so true because you've done this before. But sometimes all of that is worth it. I feel like if I didn't work 40 hours a week and have four children all at home, I would probably do a lot more craft fairs because I feel like at night I could spend a lot more time on it. But if it's something that you do for your business and you've got it down to a science, you know that the preparation is not fun. But once you're there, the fun is interacting with people and, and seeing them be in awe of what you've made. And um, you know how fun it is when that person says, oh my gosh, how did you do this? And you think, well, it's so simple. But then I think, you know, my mom is not crafty. You guys know that. We've talked about that. So we'll go to a craft fair together. And she's like, oh my gosh, I want that. And let's say it's a wreath. She's like, oh, I want that wreath. And I'm like, don't buy that. I can make it. And she's like, I know you can, but you, you're too busy to do it. So I can just buy it because that's what she does. You remember, she's a decision maker. So her fun is purchasing the product. My fun is making the product. But at the craft fair, think how much fun you'll have when you're talking to those people who just want to buy your product and how impressed they are. So you'll have fun the day of, but up until that, it's work. And I mean, if you think work is fun, then you're going to have a blast the whole time because it is work. Next week's topic for the craft fair is um, support and personality. And I'm not going to talk too much about that now because I don't want to give anything away on that. Um, but these two things are just as important as everything else. Um, actually, all the 10 we're going to talk about are important. But for this week, 
Remember, time and money. Sit down. Look at those things that you that you have as far as your money and your expenses. Weigh those things out and make sure it's good for you because it might be best for you just to go enjoy the craft fair and not worry about having a booth. But till next week, guys, think about those things. If you have questions, please put them underneath. I think it's really cool if you'll put them down in the comments below because other people get to read them and I can answer them right there in the comments so other people can see those. So please don't hesitate to ask questions and I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.